key basis. So let's say we're still not sure what are those seven key nutrition. I think tonight we all can do the refresher together because to me, that is the most important thing before we learn more or deeper into the nutrition topic. Yeah, because um, <clears throat> to me, this is the foundation. Okay, everything that we eat on a daily basis, uh, for example, our breakfast, our lunch, our dinner, all this, right? Actually, the purpose of eating other than consuming the energy, right? Uh, the sole purpose is actually to get the nutrition also because all this nutrition will be the one that will help our body to run all the mechanism, all the processes, yeah? So <clears throat> what are the, actually the six, what are the seven uh, nutrition that we have in this key nutrition, okay? So if let's say we go and learn about the nutrition topic, I mean, if you go for the degree for uh, food nutrition or whatever, I think this is also the uh, most fundamental topic that they will start off with. So today I'm going to just go through briefly all of this category with us so that we all have a, a, a big picture on this. Okay, so the first one that I'll go through is actually mineral. Okay, so mineral is the one that we always um, uh, will not take so much con uh, concern on, but it's also a very important uh, nutrition for our body. So mineral basically uh, around us in, on this earth, right? It, uh, in most of the time, uh, food that we can consume is referring to the inorganic salt, okay? Needed by the human body and uh, only a small amount. That's why it's also part of the micronutrients. Okay, mineral is also part of micronutrients whereby body only required a small amount of it and it will participate in the human's body response. Okay, so when we say human body response, right, it includes all the uh, many different processes that actually it requires small amount of mineral to make it make the process move. So many reactions of the human body require the participation of uh, mineral. Okay, but then we need to be aware that not all mineral are helpful to the human body. There is also some mineral which is uh, harmful to the human body. For example, here is uh, arsenic. Okay, so if let's say we consume certain uh, mineral which is uh, harmful to the body, it will become a toxic or become a poison to our body. So here, uh, given example arsenic, but of course we also know like other things like mercury, all that is not good for our body also. So which are the minerals that we're supposed to uh, incorporate inside our diet on the daily basis? There are uh, quite a numbers, okay? But today I'm not going through all of it, but I'll just give a few examples so that we all have an idea what are the those minerals that are actually important to us and minerals that we're looking for when we are uh, looking for food, be it natural food or be it uh, processed food that we consume on a daily basis. Okay, so for calcium, first one I'm sharing under mineral will be calcium. Okay, so calcium I think is quite common to all of us. Yeah, we, in fact, inside mineral, I think calcium is the most popular one. And we all know the benefit and the function of it. So here I listed some of the main function of uh, this calcium. The first one is to build bones. Second is to increase the bone density and prevents osteoporosis. So here we know that <clears throat> uh, uh, we always saw in the advertisement that uh, drinking this meal and that meal, then you will actually help to promote the uh, bone structure or that. Okay, it's true that if let's say that particular food got the calcium, then it will help to increase that uh, function. But the dosage and also, although it's a micronutrient, right, we also need to particular on the dosage. Uh, Okay, because uh, we also need certain uh, criteria, a, a certain amount to be sufficient for the body. Okay, and also it helps to stable the nerve. It acts as a natural tranquilizer for, for our body. So for example, if let's say we are always on a depressed or, or a stressed situation, actually calcium will help to actually uh, tranquilize us as well. And it also helps to maintain the concentration, uh, the contraction of our muscle. Okay, so sometimes when we uh, have uh, sport activities or when we do physical activities, right, we will have a muscle contraction or you will feel cramp. Okay, probably it's due to lack of calcium as well. Of course, uh, water also plays an important part. If we didn't uh, drink enough water, it will also cause the contraction issue. Okay, so it, uh, lastly, it helps uh, blood clotting uh, process. 
Okay. The second one, which is also the uh, like a brothers of calcium, which is magnesium. So normally, it, both of these will come together because their function is uh, very closely related. So from here, you can see that magnesium actually helps to prevent the soft tissue calcification. Okay, so if let's say uh, too much of calcium, right, you will actually form calcification, but with the presence of magnesium, you will help to prevent the calcification from happening. So actually these two, right, they actually balance up each other. So if let's say there's a supplementation that actually uh, have a right ratio on this calcium and magnesium is very important. So that is the reason why uh, Neutralite, we have the Calmac D okay, uh, with the correct ratio. So uh, magnesium also help to maintain a normal heartbeat for a human being. Okay, so <clears throat> the next one, it will help to prevent and dissolve uh, calcium phosphate and also calcium oxalate stones. So um, with the, with, like I mentioned, with the presence of magnesium, it helps us to lessen the worry that uh, probably intake too much of calcium, it will help, you will actually um, have the stone formation in our kidney and so on. So it will not happen if, let's say, we have a, a supplementation with the presence of magnesium because it will actually strike that balance and it helps to maintain the normal blood sugar. So calcium is uh, very important in this aspect as well. So people who actually have the worry of uh, taking too much sugar or actually they have a pre-existing condition of diabetic or what, then I think uh, magnesium will also play a role in this. And uh, another last uh, mineral that I will actually uh, share with you guys is on iron, okay? So these three, I think, is the most common one. So iron is also very important. Why? Because it's um, related to our blood. Okay, All our red blood cell and also our myoglobin is being uh, produced with the, with the existence of iron. Okay, Only with iron, then we can produce all these uh, red blood cells on a daily basis. So it's responsible with all with the existence of uh, this red blood cell and also our myoglobin, right? It helps to transport the oxygen and also nutrients all over our body. Okay, so this uh, also helps the enzyme, uh, constituting the enzyme that promotes metabolism. Okay, it's related to our cellular immune system as well. Okay, so iron is also we know very important, especially for uh, ladies as well. Because after the menstrual cycle, all that, we need a lot of iron to actually build up uh, the loss of uh, red blood cell. Okay, so how do we actually, on the day-to-day, -day, where do we get all these uh, micronutrients in terms of uh, mineral? Okay, so one of the most common source is basically from our water source. Okay, from our drinking water, basically from our water source, you will have all these uh, mineral inside our water, but it depends on the water treatment system that we have at our home. So let's say today we are using a, we are using a RO water treatment system, then you will have none of this. Okay, but if today we are using a water treatment system that actually help to retain the good mineral inside the water, then that is one of the source where we get our mineral from which is a very important source because every day we drink like six to eight liter of water. And from there, we actually accumulate all this mineral. And then second source is a more, more common one is also uh, from our diet. Okay, we consume it from those nuts that I have shown here, like for example, almond nuts, uh, chestnut nut, all these nuts, right? It also contains a, a little numbers of this uh, mineral. On top of that, of course, from our seafood diet as well, but I'm not sure how often we uh, take seafood, okay? So from time to time, you also have uh, this mineral, for example, like zinc, calcium, magnesium, all this also exists in our seafood diet, okay? But not all seafood will give the same amount of uh, mineral and also the same type of mineral. So it depends on the food and also the diet that we intake, okay? So from here, uh, I would also like to continue sharing with you guys on the second type of nutrition, which is protein. Okay, so protein, I believe uh, we all are more familiar with it already because previously we also have a session where we talk particularly on protein. So I'm not going through a lot, but I'll just go through the introductory of the, this protein here. So it composed of 300 to 3000 amino acid molecule and is the main substance that constitutes our human body as a whole, including muscle, skin, blood, and also etc. Okay, there are 22 types of amino acids. I hope everyone should be aware already by now. 
but there's only nine that we should actually, nine essential amino that we should actually consume from our diet. Okay, so with the complete of this 22 amino acid, right, it actually helps uh, our body to undergo a lot of uh, different processes. Okay, and this uh, protein all come in different sizes, structure, and also their functions. Each of the amino acids will have their different functions. Okay, so uh, mainly, like I mentioned, into two types. One is the essential amino acid, uh, human body cannot make ourselves. And then the other non-essential, which is the, the other 13, okay, body can actually synthesize itself. When you say can synthesize itself, that means you just eat as normal. Uh, we just uh, drink our, our food, all that. We just uh, drink our food. Uh, we just uh, eat and live as normal. Then body will actually produce uh, by the liver. Okay. And then the molecule of a protein is a generally very large and its uh, structure has a lot to do with its function. Okay, so uh, sometimes we also uh, know that heat and pH, when it comes to the extreme stage, it will also affect the structure of the protein and in turn, it will actually cause the functional change. Okay, so some of the source of protein that we commonly know includes uh, meat, fish, eggs, milk, and some plant seeds. Okay, for example, beans and also cereal. And we can also get, uh, I mean, protein from plant-based as well. For example, uh, whey, soy, and also uh, wheat, okay? And requirement for protein, I just want to reiterate here uh, for those who have forgotten how to calculate uh, how much protein that we need in our body. For example, adults, one kg of your body weight, you need about 0 0.8 gram. So here we run out to one gram. So for example, if you have a 60 kilo, um, body weight, then you will need probably around 60 gram of protein daily basis. For teenagers who have a very high daily activities, they have a more active uh, lifestyle, then probably they will need more uh, protein consumption. So here is actually the guidance given is 1.2 gram. So 40 kilo of daily, you actually need about 49 grams of protein. If let's say your body weight is 40 kg. So for pregnant ladies also different because you are actually feeding yourself for two lives. Okay. So this actually uh, guidance given is even more higher 1.5 gram. So for example, if you are pregnant uh, with a body weight of about 50 kg, then you need about 75 gram of protein on a daily basis, okay? And then the, <clears throat> actually I'm doing countdown. Huh? So we go to number five. So the number five category is actually fat, okay? So for fat, right, it composed of three fatty acid and one glyceroid, okay? It is the main component of uh, cell membranes and hormones. So fat is actually a very important uh, nutrition as well. Uh, but how do we differentiate which are the good fat, which are the bad fat? So we'll go through later on. But just to let we all know, actually fat is a very important material as well to make uh, our membrane cell, uh, our cell membrane and also the hormone. And also fatty acid can be divided into two types according to their structure. Okay, so this uh, is important for us to note on because uh, this is what we often see in the food label or when we go... Uh, to choose the, uh, the product in the hypermarket. So for us, the first type is actually unsaturated fatty acid, okay? And the second type is actually saturated fatty acid. And what are the difference? Which are the good and which are the bad, okay? Do we actually confuse them most of the time? So now I hope um, after today's session, we are able to distinguish this better, okay? So generally, for unsaturated fat, it's generally in a liquid form. Okay, generally, yeah. So most of uh, which are actually vegetable fat, according to their saturation, they can be divided into two types again. So they are monounsaturated fatty acid, for example, olive oil, peanut oil, etc. And then we also have polyunsaturated uh, fatty acid, for example, soybean oil, palm oil, etc. Okay, so normally if we go to the hypermarket, we saw that the particular oil is in a liquid form, then uh, most of the time they are actually towards the unsaturated, okay? Uh, okay, so when for the unsaturated fat, right, there is also uh, three main types according to their oil structure, okay? So here is differentiate according to their structure, uh, into omega-3, omega-6, omega-9. 
omega-6 is basically uh, where the most beneficial to our human body. Uh, why? Because it can actually inhibit inflammation. That means it can help us, help our body to control inflammation. But while on the other hand, omega-6 and 9, right, it can promote inflammation. So in our body, we do need 6 and 9 as well, but we don't need such on a high ratio. So we need to strike again, just like uh, calcium and magnesium just now, we need to strike a balance whereby the anti-inflammation uh, ratio should always be higher. So most of the vegetable oil, we know that it contains more on the omega-6. Okay, so in order to ha uh, have more omega-3, we need to aware on the food that we intake, which uh, we are from which. Okay, and for omega-3, there are also uh, two types, which is uh, EPA and also DHA. Okay, so I heard, I, I believe we all heard of this before, and we, we should know that DHA and EPA is both equally important because they take care of different areas in our body. For example, DHA is more focused on the brain and also eye health and in our total health. And when we talk about EPA, right, most of the time it's for joint health and also our heart health. That is the reason why you, you see we have the DHA gummy, right? So nutrient, we have DHA gummy that we say it helps the uh, brain health for the children, all that, okay? So the second part of uh, fat, after we talk about unsaturated, right? So how about the saturated part? Okay, so for saturated, right? That it includes the trans fat, which is also the common terms that we saw in the food label. So what is trans fat? Fat is like, this is actually a form of fat processed by hydrogenation, okay, such as uh, bread oil, frying oil, butter, etc. Okay, the purpose of hydrogenated oil is basically to prolong the shelf life, and it's also, um, but then it, with this process, right, it actually cause it cause the fat to become uh, more harmful to our human body. Okay, so <clears throat> trans fat increase the concentration of cholesterol in our body. So uh, in the long run, if let's say we keep consuming food with trans fat or being processed using this way, hydrogenation, it will actually cause allergy, heart disease, and also uh, cancer. Okay, so this is just to give an example. Uh, if you can recall some of the food label that we saw uh, under fat category, and then it will be under saturated fat category. Uh, then it's like 100, I mean, from here it's like out of the saturated fat, 2.5 out of 2.5 is trans fat. So basically, if let's say this good this product right is not so good for for us lah because the saturated fat is quite high. And then just now we mentioned about cholesterol also. So cholesterol will also uh, follow suit when we talk about saturated fat because uh, the structure is similar to fat and can be ingested from uh, food or made by the our liver itself. So we need to know that actually inside our body, we also will manufacture cholesterol ourselves. Okay. So if let's say we overconsume from our food and at the same time, liver also manufacture the cholesterol, then it will be overload, overload inside our body. Okay. So cholesterol basically is a substance that uh, just now we mentioned will form the self membrane and certain hormone in our body. And it can be divided into two types mainly. Okay, this is also the two types that we will see if we go for blood test. And when we look at our blood test report, right, it will segregate into two types, which is the LDL and also the HDL. So for LDL, it's the low density lipoprotein, which is uh, in short a bad cholesterol. Lah. It will actually cause the accumulation and also blockage as our arterial. Okay, so in the long run, you will cause cardiovascular disease. For example, you might have high blood pressure, you might have uh, diabetic in the long run. So uh, on the right-hand side, you can see this is the blood vessel. So if, let's say there's uh, too much of accumulation of the cholesterol, especially from the LDL, then you will actually slowly clog up the blood vessel. Okay, so the other type is actually high-density lipoprotein, HDL. This is actually a good cholesterol. So how do we actually increase the HDL to actually uh, get a balanced cholesterol reading in our body is through the intake of a good fatty acid. So when you talk about good fatty acid, I think we have gone through just now, omega-3 is one of a very good source of good, uh, good fatty acid because it contains uh, the anti-inflammation. So it also helps to uh, clean up all this bad luck inside our blood vessel, okay? And number four is the carbohydrate. 
Okay, so carbohydrate is also some, one of the nutrition that we all very familiar with. It's a compound that composed of uh, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen. I mean, in the, in the compound structure, you can see uh, these three types of chemical exist. So it's called hypo, uh, that is the reason why it's called carbohydrates. And it's the most important nutrients that provide us with the energy. It's under the macronutrients category. Okay, just now when we discuss about fat, fat is also fall under uh, macronutrients category, but we don't require it in a huge form. If we understand the nature, then you'll know that actually protein is the one that is more lean. Okay, so for carbohydrate, right, you can see one gram of carbo, it actually provides about four um, calories of energy to our body. So normally, carbs food, we don't eat in one gram, okay, normally it's like multiple of hundreds of grams, right? So it actually is very high in energy. Uh, and if let's say over consume, it definitely will lead to the weight uh, issue. Okay, so it can be divided into fuel structure as well. So we need to learn uh, how many types of carbohydrates that we have in our food. So they are first type, the monosaccharides, uh, and then second type is a uh, disaccharides, and also third type is a uh, polysaccharides. We're going through, uh, uh, here is just an example of uh, carbohydrate source that we have. Okay, so <clears throat> this is also another form of carbohydrate that we have, right? Okay, so the first type, the mono monosaccharide actually is the simplest sugar form okay that means from the name itself you know that it's only one single form mono stands for single lah, okay so that means it is the easiest for our body to take up so here there are actually three types also under the mono category which is glucose fructose and also galactose Okay, so glucose is the energy source for physiological activities. Most sugar are decomposed to the end to become a glucose. So for example, uh, most common one is uh, sugar. Lah, okay, sugar that we put inside our food, inside our pastry, inside whatever, our drinks, all that. And fructose is mainly from fruits. Okay, the second type, sweetest sugar and distributed in plant. Okay, so <clears throat> we also heard a lot of people say that oh, it's okay to take uh, fruits because uh, it's fructose, okay? Is that true? Actually, uh, to, if, you, uh, if you study, actually uh, all these three is uh, equally uh, easy to, to be absorbed by our body, okay? So basically it's uh, very uh, important for us to actually reduce the intake for all this. Yeah, because especially if let's say we have a condition of like diabetic if, or if let's say we want to control our body weight, all this will actually contribute the same to the sugar intake and it will be transformed to energy. And if not being utilized, then it will be transformed to uh, fat as well in our body. Okay. And then second is the disaccharides, which is uh, the disaccharide the, from the term itself. Di means two. Okay. So there's actually two mono inside the structure. So it's, uh, it's more complex, but it's not the most complex yet. Okay. So only two structure of sugar. Uh, so three types here, sucrose, maltose, and also lactose. Okay, so for sucrose is the most uh, commonly used for sweetener in our food. Okay, it's a non-reducing sugar. And then for maltose, it's formed during the semi-digestion of starch. Okay, and while lactose is also something very common, uh, it exists in the milk. So sometimes when we go to the supermarket, we saw the milk packaging, they said it's unsweetened, no sugar added, but when you turn to the back, you saw, hey, how come got sugar content? Okay, it's not that uh, they input it, but originally inside the milk itself already have this lactose, which is also a form of uh, carbohydrates. Okay, and lastly, which is the complex sugar. Uh, complex sugar is called uh, polysaccharides. So this actually composed of multiple sugar molecule insoluble in water, not sweet, is uh, don't have the sweet taste, okay? So here, three types, which is starch, uh, uh, glycogen, and also cellulose, okay? So for starch, I think we all should know uh, starch, right? So for example, even sometime when we have a sticky soup, all that is made of uh, starch powder, okay? So all that will actually uh, give our body carbs as well. And then we have uh, glycogen, which is actually uh, stored in our liver and also muscle. And then it will broken down to produce energy when we lack of uh, energy. 
while for cellulose basically in another term is a form of fiber okay so um, we really encourage uh, for people who is actually doing weight management they should actually go for this complex sugar instead of the other two that i mentioned earlier okay because um, <clears throat> with the with complex sugar sugar our body will require longer time to actually absorb it and uh, it also contains uh, fiber most of the time okay so this fiber will actually help to absorb some of the excess carbs that we have in our food but some people will ask how about rice that i show here rice is under which category basically rice is considered complex carbs but white rice is already refined so when we say refine, right, it has removed most of the fiber uh, coating outside it and also inside the, I mean, inside the content. So uh, basically it has been processed to become easy to absorb. So that's the reason why Asian, when we intake a lot of uh, white rice, basically our sugar level and also our carbs will increase a lot. Okay, so here, what is the substitute is basically if uh, you want to have a healthier one, basically we can go for multi-grain, we can have a, a, like a, a multi-grain rice and also other uh, substitution like quinoa and all that. Okay, so we can still take white rice, but we, we have to reduce the portion or either we substitute it with complex carbs. Okay, so here, what we're trying, what we learned here is actually uh, not all sugar tastes sweet, yeah? So it just depends on the structure of the carbohydrate. So if let's say the, the more simplest form it is, then the easier for us to taste the sweetness of it. So if let's say we didn't taste the sweetness of it, basically it's still a form of carbohydrate, just that it's uh, not in the simple structure of our body, require more efforts to actually break it down. Mm. <clears throat> so number three is the vitamin. It's also the very important nutrition category. Okay, it's also same like mineral just now. We only require in a very small portion, but this very small portion, if when missing or lack of a certain part, right, then you will actually pose as a big problem to our body. Okay, so here you can see it trace the amount of organic compounds can only be ingested from food. Uh, a small part of vitamins act as a core enzyme in our body. And it can divide it into mainly two categories, uh, okay? One is the fat soluble vitamin, second is the water soluble vitamin. Okay. And these are not all the vitamins, but the most common that we have to eat on a daily basis. So this including vitamin B, C, uh, and A, D, E, K. Okay, this one last time during the biology class, right? I have it as a ate, uh, okay, to easily remember what are those that fall under fat soluble vitamins is ate. Okay. So for fat soluble vitamins, right? Basically, uh, as the name suggests, it requires the the presence of fat in order to let our intestine and our body to process this vitamin. Okay, so it cannot be absorbed it, or it cannot be soluble without the presence of fat. Then it will actually uh, just pass by in our body and it will not be absorbed. So that is the reason why. Uh, it's important for us to have a balanced diet whereby we have the uh, presence of good fatty acid. So with that presence of good fatty acid, it actually helps us to absorb all this adate also. Okay, so vitamin A function is basically, uh, uh, we, if we all remember, uh, okay, we take vitamin E from food source, like for example, carrot or that, the orange color food. Okay, so we remember orange color, it helps us to prevent night blindness. Okay, it also helps to improve our vision. We know that we eat uh, carrot or that it helps to improve our eyesight. So that is basically the function of vitamin A. And then secondly, it also helps to prevent skin keratinization and also maintain a healthy hair follicles. Okay, and it also helps to maintain the health of our uh, mucous tissue. For example, this will exist in like, our mouth, our nasal system, okay, cavity, ear, canal, digestive tract and also even uh, for women. Okay, so increase the resistance of the respiratory system. Okay, and then lastly, it's a, also a very uh, good antioxidant in the densely capillary, uh, capillary areas. So that means for some of the very small but den densely developed capillary area, right? For example, under our eye uh, or even inside our brain, all that. So this vitamin A become a very powerful antioxidant to go up to all this small, small area. 
Okay, vitamin D function is an essential vitamin for our gastrointestinal. Okay, that means our, our gut system. And then uh, it helps the absorption and also utilization of uh, calcium and also phosphorus, uh, phosphor. Okay, so that is, again, I want to tell why Nutrilite is designed the product to have calcium, magnesium, and vitamin D together because all this is pairing and balance up each other together to achieve a better function. And then second, it helps to develop the children teeth, the bone, and the adjustable heart rate to prevent uh, myocardial weakness, okay? So it helps in terms of our heart health as well. So strengthen the immunity and also to maintain normal thyroid function, okay? When it comes to vitamin E, we also know that E is a very strong antioxidant. So it actually prevent the oxidation of oil in our body and slow down the aging process. That is also a reason why if you notice in our fish oil capsule, right, inside we also, uh, Nutri also put in vitamin E to make sure the fish oil that we consume is always at a very fresh uh, condition because it prevents the oxidation of oil. Fish oil is a form of oil, right? So it acts as an antioxidant in the hypoxic zone of our body as well. And it reduces the scar tissue and brown spot on the skin. It also helps to prevent uh, varicose vein and also muscle atrophy. So basically for people who are very emphasized on the skin, uh, whether the skin will look nice or not, other than vitamin C, I think E is also very important to help uh, reduce the spot on our skin all that and it actually have to in, improve the glow okay and lastly for vitamin k function it helps to synthesize uh, hemoglobin needed for blood floating uh, purpose it helps the synthesis of bone calcium but also play an important role in the formation and repair of our uh, uh, bones okay it assists in the conversion of glucose into glycogen, which is stored in the liver. Okay, it improves children resistance to infection as well. Uh, at the same time, tissue uh, cancer cell deposit on the tissue. It also helps to prevent the, the cancer cell tissue to deposit on, on our tissue. So vitamin K is also indirectly will help in the prevention of uh, cancer. Okay, so <clears throat> how about the vitamin, which is water soluble? Okay, so. Just now we know for soluble, there are B and C, right? So for B, there are many types of vitamin B. That is the reason why we call it uh, uh, B complex in one of our, our supplementation because uh, it constitutes of like one, two, six, 12, okay? And other Bs, okay? So each of the B will form, will give actually different function to our body. So from here, we can see mainly other than providing the energy to our body, it also help uh, different different processes, including metabolism, it helps digestion, it helps fat burn, also it helps our sleep process, all that. Okay, so it, <clears throat> it is very important, and especially for uh, pregnant ladies also, it's very important because inside vitamin B, there's one type which is called folic acid. It helps to stabilize the fetus uh, growth. Okay, so uh, you will notice actually a doctor also prescribed uh, vitamin B for pregnant ladies as well. Uh, and, and sometimes they just uh, prescribe folic acid uh, particularly, okay? So if let's say we have a, a good substitution, we have a good supplementation, we can go for that, okay? So vitamin C function, it also helps in forming the collagen, okay? With the, the presence of protein, of course, and calcium, and the important substance that actually help to form our bone, our teeth, our cartilage, and also our muscle, right? <clears throat> So uh, from here, you can also see that C is also a very strong anti-allergy, the detoxification and also anti-cancer antioxidant, okay? And why we say that C can actually improve our immune system is because it enhances our immune system uh, for T cell. Uh, it becomes a very important material for the, our immune cell, like T cell, to actually uh, improve their activities and also whiten our skin, okay? So there's a lot of uh, skincare product or even some of the uh, for consume product, they input a lot of uh, vitamin C to actually improve the, the skin uh, fairness, all that, so it will help. So <clears throat> it also helps the absorption of iron and also calcium in our body, right? Okay, so now I'm going to talk about the vitamin that we have on our daily basis, okay? 
So here is showing the five bowl of uh, fruits and vegetable. Why I showing this is because if we think where do we get our vitamins from, right? We will we will uh, we will realize that actually mainly is from our fruits and vegetables. Okay, each of the category that I mentioned just now, they will have their particular food that actually contribute to that particular uh, nutrition type. So for vitamin nutrition type, right? Actually, mainly is from our fruits and vegetables. So let's say today we consume not enough of uh, this five portion, which is recommended by the uh, Ministry of Health for, from Australia, right? Then it's basically it's very hard for us to fulfill the minimum requirement of vitamin, our daily requirement of uh, vitamin. Okay, so <clears throat> why we need vitamin? I think just now through the water soluble and also fat soluble type, we have roughly know what are the function of it. So basically, it's very important in, in, in summary, improve body immunity. Second, to maintain physical function of our body. Third, to promote growth and also development. And then lastly, to help the regeneration and also metabolism process. So without the presence of uh, these vitamins, right, actually our body will have a lot of uh, process that cannot perform, but it will not cause uh, our body to go into a critical stage. But in the long run, you will start to notice a lot of uh, deficiency in our body. Okay. And then second last is actually water. Okay. You will be surprised that out of these seven types of nutrition, right, water is also a form of nutrition that our body needs. Okay, so, so water basically uh, is a source of uh, life. The, the human body needs water is a second uh, to oxygen. Oxygen is definitely the most important, but water will come next before it uh, before the third one, which is food. Okay, so water is essential material to maintain life. The body uh, need water to also same thing to undergo a lot of uh, metabolism process physiological activities in our body so from here also it shows some of the perspective for example normal adult our body is like 70 percent is uh, water for baby is even higher 80 percent and for those uh, elder people uh, when the uh, body start to degenerate then the water and the liquid level goes lower like 55 percent okay so water actually play a very important role in maintaining also our body temperature and also to maintain the organism inside our body because we all know that every organism need water to survive right so inside our body right there's also a lot of other microorganisms which require water for their survival okay so last is actually fiber. So just now, if you remember, when we talk about carbohydrate, there's one type of uh, cellulose, which is uh, a type of fiber also. So it's mainly exists in the plant, uh, plant uh, structure. Okay, so uh, here we're going to talk particularly on fiber itself because uh, cellulose is one of it. But if let's say we today we consume vegetables, other uh, starch and also other fruits, right? you will give us more variations of uh, uh, fiber into our body. But here we want to learn that actually for fiber, there are two main categories as well. One is the insoluble fiber, which is uh, from the name itself, we know that it's something that cannot be soluble. And then that means it will always in its original form. So th the purpose of this is actually to help our, our intestine to have this trigger, which is called the peristalsis. This peristalsis is actually a wave of contraction. Okay, this wave of contraction is the one that helps to push our stool uh, during our uh, business. Lah, okay, so this is why if let's say we lack of uh, insoluble fiber in our intestine, then we will have this constipation issue. And at the same time, this uh, presence of insoluble fibers, right, you also help to uh, encourage the growth of uh, beneficial bacteria, okay? So here we call probiotics, okay? So if let's say we have a probiotic inside, the probiotic also need food. So fiber is also one of the food. That's the reason why in our probiotics for Nutrilite, they actually include together the prebiotic, uh, which is the food for the probiotic to ensure that when it reach our intestine, you are actually able to survive. Second type of fiber is actually water-soluble fiber. Okay, it can slow down the speed of glucose entering our body. So basically for this type of fiber, right, you also have this additional function whereby it helps to control the sugar level, but at the same time, you also help to control the cholesterol also. 
uh, you can also help us to bring the excess cholesterol, which is in our diet, out from our body. Okay, so fiber is so important in this aspect. Okay, so basically I have covered all the uh, seven types of uh, key nutrition that we, uh, that we uh, have in our, in our food. Okay, so here I'm going to continue to share with you all the new food pyramid. Okay, so last time we know that uh, the food pyramid that we studied last time, right? The most bottom one, which is the one that we consume the most is basically uh, grain and also carbohydrate. But here I want to uh, refresh everyone that this is already a new one. Okay, so it actually encourage more consumption of vegetable fruits and also concentrated nutrients and followed by a uh, protein, a uh, food which is uh, rich in protein and then followed by a uh, good uh, portion of a uh, healthy fat okay and then lastly is from uh, our carbohydrate from a uh, healthy source also which is grain and also gluten-free whole grain okay so this six group of uh, every day we have to maintain this portion to give a clearer picture right how actually this should be consumed is the supo supo separo that we uh, encourage in the body key program so basically, this is taken from the Harvard Medical School. Same thing. This is just a different name, healthy eating plant. But actually, if you see and you look at the picture, it's a suko suko separo. So that means separo of it, right, is actually the vegetable and fruits that we need to consume at least half portion in our daily meal uh, for every meal. Okay, if let's say we're not able to do this, then we really need a substitute. I mean, we need an assistant from supplementation or what to fill up the gap. And then the other half, you can see it split into half. Half is a good quality of uh, protein source, which is uh, you can take it from fish, poultry, beans, nuts, all that. And the other half is actually our carbohydrate and encouraged to take from the complex carbs, which is a uh, whole grain. Okay, so if you did manage to take from the whole grain, fine, we can take uh, white rice as well, but we need to control the portion. Okay. And here, it also didn't uh, miss out the other two types of nutrition, which is uh, water, and then the other one is healthy oil. So they say healthy oil is we have to consciously aware the types of oil that we use. When we go to the hypermarket, when we choose the oil that we want to uh, cook for cooking, right? So many types. But normally, if let's say we are not aware on the differences, right, and we didn't learn about nutrition, right? we might just compare the price, right? So for each of the product, the price is different for a reason because there are different types of quality of uh, oil, okay? So we want to choose the one with a good quality, which is uh, higher in the omega-3, okay, lower in the 6 and 9, okay? So these are the oil that normally you're aware the price is slightly higher compared to the normal cooking oil one, okay? But if let's say we want to go for a healthier one, I think it's definitely worth to invest the extra cent because uh, if I say our health is our main concern, then I think we should go for oils like made from con uh, canola. Okay, canola is a type of flour which actually produces a good source of uh, oil. And then we also have olive oil, which is a more common one. So this we can actually use uh, for our cooking or we can actually incorporate for our uh, other food preparation, for example, salad, all that. Okay, so water, I don't have to mention more. Water mainly is to make sure the water is uh, clean, uh, is the filtered water, and then at the same time, it retains the good mineral inside the water. Okay, that's the uh, simple requirement. So now we're going to uh, finish the sharing soon, but I just go through some of the label sample with you guys. That is the purpose of we all learning about these seven key nutrition, right? So if let's say we refer to some of the label that we can see uh, day to day, then we will know, understand better what are we looking at actually when we look at this label. So basically the nutrition label that we have all the on all the food that we have in the market is basically referring to these seven type of uh, main uh, nutrition. <clears throat> okay, so now when we look at it, we have a clearer picture already. Okay, Tanaga, it's not a form of nutrition, but just to measure the energy level in it. And then protein, uh, just now we learned about it already. So lemak is fat, right? So inside fat, we touch about cholesterol just now. So we know whether cholesterol is good or bad. Okay, it's got LDL or uh, HDL, but we, we, they will not label here. But at least we know if let's say uh, the cholesterol is too high, then we should opt for one with a lower. And then carbohydrate, we also know already. 
sugar will normally be part of the carbohydrate. That is the reason why in the food label, uh, sugar is always under the carbohydrate category. Okay, and then some, they don't have to actually uh, disclose how much inside it is uh, sugar, but some do disclose. Okay, so you want to opt for the nutrition label, which actually disclose as transparent as possible. Okay, because some of the manufacturers, they don't disclose everything. Okay, they just tell you, okay, how about carbohydrate 23 gram. Okay, but inside 23 gram, how much is sugar? So from here, we know that well, this one, the sugar, this is probably fructose huh? because this is a fruit juice, right? So fructose is quite high, 21.4 gram. Okay, and then they have the fiber, which is also a type of nutrition just now, 6 gram. And then sodium is a mineral. And then we have vitamin. And this, the other thing is actually under the micronutrients for vitamin. Okay, so I just want to ask, I uh, just want to share with all of you guys, right? If now we already know about nutrition and when we look at this kind of label, we can interpret a lot of things from this label already. Okay, so if let's say this pack of uh, drinks, right, is a, uh, is a one liter and then it can actually have five, uh, uh, five serving with a 200 ml each serving, right? You'll know that for each of the serving, you'll be getting this uh, nutrition, okay? Then I want to ask if let's say this juice right contains so many different types of fruits, right? Do you think that it only have vitamin C? Does it uh, make sense to you? To me, I think immediately it doesn't make sense to me because um, if let's say all this real food we, we makan, right, is definitely more than vitamin C. Even if we go Google simply the guava is uh, other than C is the highest, then you will have other vitamins and also other uh, nutrition inside it. But how come when it becomes juice, right, it's just uh, vitamin C. So you can see, you can double check the ingredient. It's true that all this is being input. Uh, all this uh, in the picture is here. They have the ubi, gladek, apple, all that. So the only reason that we can uh, explain here is that for this kind of juice, right, they didn't focus on the nutrition retention, but there is more on make sure this is 100% juice, okay? Of course, it comes with vitamin C as well lah, and some sodium, okay? So as a consumer, we want to pay this uh, money to actually get 100% juice with uh, so minimal of uh, nutrition value, or we want to go for something that actually show us the nutrition value is higher, okay? This is a question mark or we can actually, I, I think through real food, I think we can get even more from, from this type of uh, water. So second type, uh, second example that we show here is uh, also something that we also uh, come across day to day, which is the peanut butter. So you can see from here, uh, it particularly highlight to us that cholesterol is zero, right? Which is good. Okay, so from here, you will also see the energy level per serving per 100 gram is how much. The protein, the fat is uh, 47 gram, which is uh, also quite high. So like I mentioned, carbohydrate, it only state uh, 28 gram. Okay, it never say out of this carbohydrate, uh, how many is actually sugar. But how do you know whether there's a sugar inside? You can immediately see the ingredients here. Peanut is the first one, second already got sugar. Okay, so you already know in this carbohydrate, 28 gram, definitely sugar will, sub, will, will uh, uh, play a big role inside. Okay, and in fact, it could be 100% sugar. Okay, that's the reason why they didn't actually uh, split it out. Okay, and then sodium this much. Okay, so from here, we also uh, learn how to actually uh, be aware what are the nutrition that we want to target more and through this sharing today you'll know which are the nutrition that actually our body need more and what kind of nutrition will always have extra in our food for example sugar is something that definitely you'll get more than you need okay and then <clears throat> when we talk about planta planta is also something that commonly uh, consumed directly or indirectly because if you tap out outside sometimes the burger store or the sandwich or uh, roti john or whatsoever they before they grill it right they will also put on a planta or that so is planta a good uh, fatty acid okay short answer is no lah, okay because it's plant-based and normally it's uh, in a in a in a in a physical form so remember just now we, when we learned about unsaturated fat it should be in a liquid form so anything which is actually uh, in physical form 
is uh, likely from the plant and at the same time it's very hard for our body to actually absorb and in uh, to to actually break down and in the end you actually uh, clog in our body okay so you will see actually the saturated uh, fat is a uh, very high one 49 over gram per 100 gram okay it's almost half of it is actually saturated fat okay so when we learn about nutrition we can actually look at this uh, very uh, even clearer already so you'll see or oh, even though they have a uh, vitamin different type of vitamin right but the amount is actually quite small okay later you'll see later i'll also share with you you will see already okay one set of uh, no need one set one bg of the double x already much higher than every of the nutrition here but what we need to look at when we buy this kind of uh, fatty acid right we need to see whether the bad uh, fatty acids is high okay even though they just put in a little bit of all these good vitamins right it doesn't make it become something good okay <laughs> so we need to be very careful as a consumer and then second this is an uh, this is another example for example we opt for the replacement for milk all that sometimes we also opt for the plant-based so this is the almond unsweetened pure natural taste so from the label itself the front page it looked very nice even come with the antioxidant vitamin d calcium all that but when we the moment we turn to the back right and you look at the label okay now we all expert already so you can see what 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 i mean what kind of nutrition we'll be getting out of 100 uh, ml okay this bottle itself right is actually one liter uh, uh, yeah, I think it's one liter. Okay, so uh, yeah, one liter. So out of 100 ml, right, you only get 0, 0. 0.0 point of all of this. Even protein is like 0. 0.4 gram already. That is so, so, so little. Okay, even though the bad thing also little, but the good thing also little. So basically it's like drinking water only. Lah. Okay, so you want to double check, you go to the ingredient, you see. Okay, indeed, uh, the first most, uh, portion ingredient is water and then subsequent they input almond two percent on it okay and then followed by other uh, nutrition okay so from here right we want to like even if this box of thing they are just selling like five ringgit six ringgit i'm not going to pay that kind of money to buy this thing uh, because you are like paying the money to buy the water only the nutrition value is so low okay even the calcium okay calcium you can easily get from other food or even supplementation which is much higher than than here already okay you don't have to pay this much to to just drink and get the calcium the, the protein is so low okay so you we have to check ourselves what are the the food that we consume on a daily basis are we actually making the right choice are we spending our money uh, for something which is at the value okay another example also almond and sweetened also sounds good okay same thing Okay, the nutrition value for 100 ml uh, is 0. gram only. All is so low. Okay, so again, we check. They also just practice like input the almond 2.5%. Okay, 2.5%, I don't know, like this whole pack, right? It's just like few drips only is the, is the almond essence. Okay, so we don't want to like just feel we are healthy. We want to really take in healthy stuff not just to show people okay we are taking all this wow, seems like very healthy but actually is there's no nutrition value inside so i might want to show you all what what we call as a very powerful transparent full disclosure of uh, nutrition value is for example if you take up our double x right the mineral the vitamins the plant phyto the plant concentrate all listed clearly, okay, per tablet, how much, okay? This one, all per tablet, uh, the vitamin content is much higher than everything that I showed just now, okay? So <clears throat> the transparency and the ingredients that use inside uh, is very important. So you know what you're paying for. So another example, like our body key, also disclose everything, okay? All show the, when it claims that it's low calorie, it's indeed low calorie, and we don't have to mention that we are unsweetened, because from the label itself, you already know like carbohydrate uh, per serving per pack is like only 16 gram. Okay, like just now, you, if you remember, like the peanut, all that is so high. Okay, so all this is actually 
show transparently okay how many types of vitamin my how many types of mineral okay we disclose okay for the good fatty acid for example if you are taking the omega fish oil okay even show up to how much portion is from the salmon oil the other portion from other fish oil what are the type of fish uh, sardina and these are the species of the fish that is transparently showing also okay this bottle all i i take from my own house bottle yeah so it's malaysia variant one so it's really what malaysia product is closing up here and for our protein it also show up to each type of essential amino acid which is inside our protein so today, if you if you if you say okay, I have a, a, a slightly cheaper product or even very very cheap product out there that I can substitute, I don't have to take nutrient protein or whatsoever. But do make sure that the product that we opt for, right, is really have the nutrition value. If it's showing like what I showed just now, right, even it's telling me like two ringgit, three ringgit, I will not go for it because it's like totally no value. Okay. So <clears throat> seven key nutrition. Today, we learn about seven key nutrition. I just want to tell you all that we can easily close up the gap of these seven categories of nutrition easily by having a very wholesome breakfast. So from here, you can see uh, protein, double X, body key, and also our fish oil are the basic foundation. Okay, These are the things that I normally recommend people to start off with if let's say they want to change or they want to improve their diet intake, they want to improve their nutrition intake. These are the very simple ones. So like for every of the price is also transparent and you can calculate like for protein, two scope, two, uh, two ringgit 40 cent. Why two scope? Because I feel that two, two scope baru cukup, uh, okay, plus the body key, then it will give you the fullness. Okay, so we calculate, let's see, calculate the price is how much. Two scope of protein, two ringgit 40 cent. One soft gel in the morning, one ringgit 10 cent. And then one set of double X you take along with the shake, right? Two ringgit and 20 cent. BK is not Burger King, uh, it's body key. Okay, so body key is 8 ringgit 50 cent one such it. But this one such it, it gives you 25 types of uh, nutrition that I have shown you the label just now, this close full. Okay, so this everything add up, right? If you take this as your breakfast, definitely Chukop Kanyang one. It's only 14 ringgit 20 cent. And if today you learn how to take the 10% rebate through the CSI program, it's only 12 ringgit 70 cent. Today, kalau, if we go to the mama for our breakfast, we take one, uh, we take one more teh ice or we take teh tarik and then we take a uh, few kueh. I think it's easily 10 to 15 ringgit also. But if today we can 12 ringgit 70 cent, we can change our life from one single meal and ensure that whole day we already have these seven key nutrition. I think it's a peace of mind and it's very easy for us to sustain that way. Okay, and here lastly, I just want to share with you guys the life forming chain. Okay, of course, it's some in Chinese, but I will try to explain in English. So this is basically the mechanism that our body need, like each of the nutrition, they need each other for the process to complete. So let's say, for example, you, you, you have, uh, you maybe today you intake six type of essential amino acid, you are missing like three type, then this last three type, right, all this blue line that related to these three types of amino acid, it will not happen. This process will not happen in our body. So this is what we call this life forming chain. We need to ensure this change is like uh, happening every day. So you have to take all these 46 type of essential nutrients. And by having the breakfast that I mentioned just now, right, in the previous slide, right, you take all these 46 nu nutrients in our body, okay, without have to worry you miss out any of it, all take, okay.